Hey guys, it's Ed. Welcome back. Today I have a question for you. What'd you get if you take a croissant and you add a whole bunch of sugar to it? Let's go back to the kitchen to find out. So yes, if you haven't guessed it already, today we're going to be tackling the French classic, the Queen Amand, the most delicious of French laminated pastries. Now obviously Queen Amand isn't difficult to say, but when you read it, it's a little bit tricky. Queen Amand. Breton dialect for butter cake. Now that, that is sorted out, we can get on with the recipe. So as I said, recipe is from my book, Petition Made Simple. Um, the recipe will also be in the corner as always. Now in the book, I tend to use the food processor, but since not everybody has one, today I'm also gonna show you how to make it by hand instead. So all we're gonna need for the recipe is some uh, flour, two types. We're gonna use plain flour and some bread flour. We're then gonna use some salt, some yeast, two portions of butter, some caster sugar, that's what's gonna give the caramelization, and then some milk. Very, very simple ingredients. So for this recipe, we're gonna take our two types of flour. So we've got bread flour and plain flour. We're gonna add that to a large bowl, along with our salt. And then we're gonna take two tablespoons of our sugar and add that to the dough as well. And then just mix that together with your hands until everything's nicely distributed. And then we're gonna take a large portion of our butter in pieces, just kind of small dice like this, we're gonna add that to the flour mixture and then we're gonna rub that in partially. The key to this is we want chunks because the chunks of butter are gonna help kind of create that laminated effect and create puff in the dough, so that nice rise on there. So you can use your hands. The risk of that if it's a warm day is your hands will make the butter go soft and melted. So it's best if you can avoid using your hands too much. Normally I would put this in the food processor, but if you don't have one, what we're gonna use is a pastry blender. So all you're gonna do is push that in to the butter, into the flour, just to create these big pieces. And then once that's nicely cut in, we can just use your hands just to rub in a little bit more. And what you want to see is some flakes, some chunks, but nothing too small in there. So now what we're gonna do is take another bowl and add to that our milk, yeast, and a little bit of water as well, and just mix that together. And then we're gonna take the rest of our mixture, our flour and butter mixture, and just tip that into the milk, and then just using a spatula, we're just gonna fold that together, trying to moisten it as much as possible. Once you've got that into a kind of shaggy looking dough, we're gonna tip that out onto the work surface, and then just use your hands just to gently bring that together. Now you don't wanna overwork this for too long because the butter will start to melt, so try and make this a quick movement. Try and get this done in a nice brief moment. Um, but just bring it together until it looks slightly less shaggy, a little bit more uniform. We're then gonna wrap that in cling film, form it into a rough rectangle, pop that in the fridge for 45 minutes. That's gonna help all the gluten relax. It's also gonna help to make sure that all that flour is hydrated. So whilst the dough is in the fridge, we're also gonna put our remaining piece of butter in one piece into the freezer to get it really nice and cold because in the next stage we're going to grate it and if it's only room temperature or even fridge cold it will just melt as we grate it so get it in the freezer resting as the dough does too so now that we have left the dough to chill it's been about 45 to 50 minutes we can take our butter which is nice and frozen and we just want to grate it on a regular old box grater the reason we want the butter frozen is because obviously while we're holding it it will get warm so it's just easy to work with when it's cold <laughs> So as that is finished, because the butter will have got slightly warm in your hands, you put that just back in the freezer whilst we work on the dough for a second. So we need to take our dough that is nice and chilled, and we're going to roll it into a rectangle that is roughly 20 by 50 centimeters, although the exact dimensions don't matter. So we're gonna lightly flour the work surface. And if at any point this dough becomes sticky or hard to work with, we can just pop that back into the fridge. So we're gonna take our rolling pin, you can Lightly flour the pin too, and then just gently roll it. Now what we can do is, because the dough is cold, it's easier if we start by, rather than rolling it, just give it kind of bashes. And what this does is it gently warms the dough up and it will help get us to roll it out without actually cracking the dough. Now the dough is rolled out, we're gonna add our butter on top. And we want to try and spread that out so it covers two thirds of the dough, leaving the top third, the furthest away from you, clear.
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold that top third over the butter and then the last third, the bottom third over that like a business letter. Then we're gonna turn it through 90 degrees and then wrap that in cling film and pop that in the fridge for 20 minutes to chill. So the reason we're going through this extra step of adding more butter and then this process of lamination is to get the characteristic layering that you get in a croissant dough. Now obviously this is a simplified recipe, it's not as complex or as timely as a traditional croissant, but it will give us that characteristic flakiness and that layering in a beautiful Queen Amman. So now that the dough has chilled, we can take it out of the fridge and we're gonna roll it to a 20 by 50 centimeter rectangle as before. But this time, once we're done, we're gonna take half of our remaining sugar and spread that over the entire dough. And to make sure it's adhered to the pastry underneath, we're just gonna gently use your rolling pin to gently roll the sugar, just to lightly press it into the dough. And then we're gonna fold it into thirds as before, turn it through 90 degrees once again and repeat the process a second time. Then we're gonna pop it into the fridge and let it chill for another 20 minutes. Now that the dough has chilled for the final time, we're gonna roll out once more, again to about 50 by 20 centimeters to a nice long rectangle. Then just gonna lightly trim the edges, just a thin amount to kind of show the layers inside. And then we're gonna cut it into eight equal squares. This time, instead of using flour for the work surface, we're gonna use a little bit of sugar because that's what's gonna help the caramelization on the outside of these Queen Amal. When we get ready to bake these, you can do a couple of things. I'm using these small tart rings uh, to line with the dough, but you can also put this into muffin tins, or you could even do this free form if you wanted, but you will get a much nicer shape if you've got some form of ring or shape to hold it. To form the shape of the Queen Man, what we're gonna do is take one of the squares of dough, and you're going to literally take the corners and press into the middle like that, and place that into a tart ring like that. So it's very straightforward. If you're gonna use the muffin pan, it's exactly the same thing. You're just gonna form it into the square like that and push that into the muffin pan. So what we're gonna do now is just lightly cover that with cling film, set it aside for about half an hour, just to let them prove a little bit, or they won't fully rise properly. So just leave them aside for half an hour and then pop them into the oven and bake until they're beautifully golden brown. So after about 25 minutes, you'll have these beautiful golden Queen of Man. And the key thing at this stage is, because that caramel will be slightly molten, we need to take them out of the rings really, really quickly. So using your gloved hands, we're just gonna take off those rings. So that is how you make the Queen of Man. You just need to now make sure you leave them to cool fully before enjoying, otherwise they won't have that beautiful crisp caramel and those beautiful layers. So whether you're making them in my traditional shape like this, or in the muffin pan like this, these are the most delicious caramelized croissants you'll ever try. So it's super buttery, flaky, kind of caramelly. Basically, it's pure heaven in a pastry. Hmm. As always, the recipe is up in the corner, and please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up on this video if you liked it and leave me any comments down below of anything you want to see in an upcoming video. As for now, I'm off for a cup of coffee and a Queen of Mammoth.